Washington Pod presents Earl Nightingale. I have a 10 year old son. Many times I've thought of taking him out of school and simply educating him at home. I can afford the best tutors. I have a fine home library. I believe I can so arrange things that he could get a much better education and far less time at home than he could by going to school, even though he attends what's considered to be an excellent private school. But I've realized that to take a child out of the educational establishment in the United States is to immediately rouse a dragon. The educational establishment zealously protects its mandate and monopoly. Indications that you might be able to do a better job simply because you could bring more concentration and more personalized teaching to bear fall on deaf ears. The system wants its children. Billions upon billions of dollars depend upon it. Millions of jobs, in fact, the largest industry in the country. Well, there's a book on radical views of compulsory schooling edited by William F. Rickenbacker entitled The Twelve-Year Sentence. It's a major attack upon compulsion in education by a group of discerning scholars and attorneys. Compulsory schooling is a relatively recent idea, but it is now embedded in the laws of all the states where it causes endless mischief. It's a boon to educationists, but grief to dissenters and taxpayers, and it poses some interesting questions. For example, what do you do if you're an Amishman and believe that most education offends God? What do you do if you're a Christian scientist and the public schools require your child to be vaccinated before he can attend classes? What do you do if you believe in the biblical version of the creation and your children are taught Darwinian ideas? What do you do if you're a modern secularist and your school insists on teaching the biblical version of the creation? What do you do if your school is mediocre and you wish to teach your gifted child at home? What do you do if your school is infested with dope addicts, hoodlums, and depraved youngsters but you can't afford to send your child to a good private school? What do you do if your educational bureaucracy forces ever-increasing taxes and ever-inferior schooling on you? What do you do if you desire to withdraw your child from public school one day a week for religious instruction? Well, this book, The Twelve-Year Sentence, is about just such problems, and it tells what the courts and educationists did to just such descending people who were caught in the coils of truancy law. I know I've thought a great deal about compulsory education. I don't like that word, compulsory, do you? When someone tells me I have to send my child to school, and by so doing indicating that he can do a better job of educating my child than I can, my hackles rise. And I think many people feel that way. Murray N. Rothbard, one of the writers of the book, points out that compulsory schooling began in the modern world with the Protestant Reformation. Before the Reformation, instruction had been carried out privately in church schools and universities, in private schools, and in private guild schools for occupational training. But Martin Luther, in his famous letter to the German rulers in 1524, urged the establishment of public schools and compulsory attendance, and did so on the basis of a military analogy. He wrote, Dear rulers, I maintain that the civil authorities are under obligation to compel the people to send their children to school. If the government can compel such citizens as are fit for military service to bear spear and rifle, to mount ramparts and perform other material duties in time of war, how much more it has a right to compel the people to send their children to school, because in this case we're warring with the devil, whose object it is secretly to exhaust our cities and principalities of their strong men. Well, influenced by Luther, the German state of Gotha founded the first modern public schools in 1524. Thuringia followed suit in 1527. Luther himself devised the Saxony school plan, which was established in Saxony in 1628. The first compulsory attendance system was established again under Lutheran influence by the Duke of Württemberg in 1559. Attendance was compulsory, detailed records were kept, and fines were levied on truants. The major purpose of the school system was theocratic, to use the power of the government to compel adherence to Lutheranism and to aid in the suppression of dissent from the established church. The other leading influence on the establishment of compulsory schooling in the modern world and one even more relevant to the United States was that other great reformer, John Calvin. Once again, the major object for public schools was to inculcate obedience to a Calvinist-run government and thereby to aid in the suppression of dissent. Control their little minds, and you can control them when they grow up. And that's my comment, not Mary Rothbard's. People think of compulsory education as something which will guarantee the best possible education because it's in the hands of the school authorities. But a good friend of mine told me that he's attended educational conventions and conferences which covered a multitude of subjects, virtually all of them related to the people in the educational establishment. But he never once heard anyone at any of these meetings or conferences ask the question, how can we do a better job of educating the children? 
The purpose of my comments here is not to criticize the quality of American education. That's been done by people much better qualified than I, many of them in the educational establishment. But to pose the question, is compulsory education, is the taking of our children away from us for the purpose of learning in their and our best interest? Perhaps in most cases it is. In fact, were it not compulsory, I'd say that in the vast majority of cases, our system of education is excellent. But I don't think it applies to all, for many of the reasons I outlined earlier. Anyway, I'm putting the 12-year sentence on the recommended reading list. I'm sure educators will find it as interesting as we more passive parents.